What's going on YouTube? This is NecroStevo and it's time for week two of the Alpha Battle League. Now week two, the Eternity City Enders go up against the Los Angeles Nita Kings. Of course, I battled Johnny Diesel and the Los Angeles Nita Kings back in the LBA several weeks ago, and I barely managed to scrape out a victory against him, so this was definitely his chance not only at revenge, but uh, also really just to see what a whole new set of Pokemon could do. Now, it was a little bit of a taste of my own medicine having to go up back up against Weavile. Um, I did expect him to not only bring Weavile, but I expected him to bring Togekiss. And of course, he has Mega Ampharos drafted, so he has no reason to not bring his Mega when he can just hit me with a really powerful Dragon Pulse. Now, to match up against that, I decided to go ahead and uh, bring Mega Charizard X with the substitute variant. That way, I can hopefully sub get up a Dragon Dance or two, and then hit his team with Fire Punch as opposed to Flare Blitz. Uh, Fire Punch actually had enough damage for me uh, when I was running Calcs, and of course I was running Outrage, so that way once I got rid of Togekiss, then I would have a really strong way to punish a lot of his team. I also decided to bring Hitmontop. I bred a brand new one and put a weird spread on it, so that I could always live uh, an Excadrill's Earthquake, even if it's um, adamant, and then hit it back with at least a 2 8 on the Mach Punch. Uh, I also wanted to be able to one-hit KO Weavile with Mach Punch if necessary, and I also wanted to be able to uh, KO the Meloetta if he decided to go into the step form. I wanted to be able to KO that with a couple of Mach Punches too. I did not want to utilize Close Combat just because that takes away from him on Toss ability to take hits. Uh, I didn't put Thunderbolt onto Porygon 2 for the battle, I figured Ice Beam and Dry Attack were good enough. If I could, I really wanted to try to trace the Serene Grace from Togekiss, actually, because that would be fun to throw Tri-Attacks around with Serene Grace and have that nice 20% chance for a Freeze, Burn, or Paralysis against his team. Now, uh, going into the match, I wasn't actually sure who to lead with. I expected him to lead with either Excadrill um, or, to a lesser extent, Meloetta, but he actually leads with Ampharos. So this is a terrible lead matchup because he gets the Mega Evolve for free, and I'm basically forced to go for a substitute here just to see what he's going to lock himself into or not lock himself into to see if he's just going to outright attack or just go for Volt Switch. I was really hoping he would just attack, but he does just go for Volt Switch. So that kind of sucks. Um, I could have gone out into Drapion there to take the special hit, but I couldn't have known that he was just going to go for Volt Switch right away. Now, since he's in with Weavile, I figured that he was going to try to go for Pursuit. So I just stayed in and went for the Will-O-Wisp, but he just knocks me off and I lose Gengar on turn two of the battle, so that sucked. Definitely not the way to start off the battle, but fortunately Weavile can't do much to Drapion, especially a defensive one, and I knew I could take any hit and set up Toxic Spike, so that's what I went for. Unfortunately for me, I get flinched, uh, so that is really unfortunate. Toxic Spikes would have not only put a lot of pressure on his team, but he would have been forced to go out into Excadrill to spin them away. Uh, now I have to go out into my Hitmontop, and he knows that I'm going to switch, so he's able to go for a knockoff and get off and get rid of my leftovers, which is really unfortunate. I would have loved that recovery. Um, but now at least I can threaten him out, I guess. Um, we're going to go for Stone Edge, expecting Togekiss to come in, and that is who comes in. But here I can clearly see that it's going to be a defensive variant of Togekiss, taking that Stone Edge really well, even with my attack investment. I'm not max attack, I just I do have enough attack to really to do something. Uh, I did expect Thunder Wave, so I went on into Rotom here. Even if he went for Air Slash, it wouldn't do that much because he's taking a neutral hit and he's not especially invested. I figured that Ampharos was going to come back in, and so why not just go for the Hidden Power Ice that I bred? Oh wait, it barely does anything to Ampharos. And I'm Scarfed, so I'm locked in here with this Hidden Power Ice that is basically doing negligible damage. Uh, I go out into Porygon 2 here just to hope that I could take the Dragon Pulse or the Thunderbolt if you wanted to go for it. And I actually take it pretty well. I'm able to retaliate with an Ice Beam and do a decent amount of damage. And here, um, knowing that he's going to probably knock me down to below half, just going to, uh, hopefully, at least, my, my plan was to recover up here as Meloetta goes for the Relic Song. But Meloetta puts me to sleep. And that's unfortunate because now he gets to change form and I'm asleep. Any move he goes for is going to knock out Porygon. So that's just terrible all around. I lose Porygon for basically no reason. If I had been able to get my HP back up, then I would have been able to take at least one close combat, even Life Orb, because I am max defense uh, invested. 
and I would have been able to hit him back with a try attack or paralyze him with Thunder Wave, but that did not happen, unfortunately. And here, trying to get some momentum on my side of the field, I figured he didn't want to take a Mach Punch from the minus one defense, because it would be super effective right now because of his typing. And so I hard switch out expecting him to switch, but he just goes for Relic Song again and puts my Charizard to sleep too. He switches his forms back, which now he's going to take special hits a little bit better. And thank goodness I have Fire Punch, because if I can wake up here, I can at least take out the Meloetta. Uh, Meloetta is basically just gonna, is, is running train on my team now. It's just putting things to sleep and KOing them so far. Um, I barely live Shadow Ball. He gets the special defense drop. Fortunately, it doesn't matter. Uh, I wake up and I am able to finish him off with Fire Punch. But now I, I can't really do anything with my Mega Charizard. My HP is too low, I can't set up a Dragon Dance, I can't really set up an Earthquake, and now, if I switch out and he sets up Stealth Rocks, my uh, Charizard is going to be dead. But I really need to cut the Extra Drills attack here because I figured he'd go for Earthquake, and boy howdy this does a lot more damage than I expected it to do. Um, it didn't look like a 2-hit KO, Very, it was kind of probably pretty close there whether that was a 2-hit KO or not. And I just went for Mach Punch, hoping that he would stay in and try to go for another one. I wanted to soften it up some. But he brings in Seismitoad, and that Mach Punch does negligible damage to the Seismitoad. <laughs> uh, I really hate Seismitoad's design. That thing just gets on my nerves. But anyways, though, we're going to go out in the Drapion. I'm going to try to set up the Toxic Spikes again. Now, imagine if Toxic Spikes had been up this whole time. Meloetta would have take some, taken poison damage. The... Um, of course, the Seismitoad would have taken it. And if he brought in Excadrill, he would have had to choose between spinning or setting up the or, or going for the earthquake. But since I was never able to put him in that position in the first place, I basically just lost the momentum and all of his Pokemon are at really good HP. I just, in this battle at this point, there's not much that I can do. That flinch really messed me up alongside the, the sleeps there. And now, um, just to rub a little bit of more salt in the wound, he gets a critical hit Scald, which since I'm guessing that he's defensively orientated based on how little my Monk Punch did, I'm gonna guess that uh, that crit mattered. Now here, I I have nothing I can really do. I can go for Leaf Storm, but he has Togekiss, and he still has Mega Ampharos, so it really doesn't matter what I lock myself into. Um, I guess Hidden Power Ice does hit his whole team, but it does so little damage that it's not going to be able to really do anything. Um, I go back on into Charizard just to sacrifice this so I can switch up my moves and then go for the Electric type move against the Togekiss. But if I'm locked into the electric type move, then guess what? He can just bring in Seismitoad or Excadrill and hit me from there. So that's going to be um, a pretty bad loss. Actually, I think that's a 0-5 loss to this team. I think, I don't think I knocked out anything. Did I? I don't know. Any, my point is, is that I feel like I, I feel like I played okay. Just not, not the best end of the hacks there, but that's okay though. We're still early on in the league. There are a total of, um, I think there's going to be at least at least 12 12 weeks of battling for this for this league so i definitely have plenty of time to turn it around at the time between losing battles in the lba and now in the abl kind of frustrating but we're certainly not in any position to give up because that's not how the eternity enders do it you can't end anyone if you've already reached your own end so next week we'll actually be taking on the i'm not sure who's the week three is um, I want to say it's the Kentucky Kecleon. I'm pretty sure it's the Kentucky Kecleon. So we'll be looking forward to that next week. And I hope you guys have a great day. Bye-bye, guys.